Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 98 of the Guardian Project Podcast. I'm your host, Andy, and Coil, you know how much I love bluffing Counterspell on you, right? Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. Well, if I think about doing it over and over and over again, is that considered theoretical dupe location? Oh, that's great. <laughs> I like that a lot. That's fantastic. <laughs> I was so proud of that one, you guys, this week. Man, I thought about this one for hours. Yeah. You, well, good practice to your theory, Andy. Thank you. Theoretically, uh, I'm good at intros. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm your other host, Mike. And, um, you know, I think Guillaume really is the real combo lover of all these new creatures. You know, sometimes I order the number three combo from him. Sometimes I order the number seven combo from him. Um, so, yeah, yeah, he's the real combo lover. Master Chef. He's going to... So, what's the what's the combo... Combo number five. Mambo not number Mambo, five? Not Mambo number five. Combo number five. That's an amazing title for a Guillaume deck. <gasps> oh my gosh. Well, combo number five. Well, actually, it probably doesn't have to be a Guillaume deck, but it makes sense to be a Guillaume deck. All right. It's trademarked here. Guillaume combo number five. <laughs> <laughs> Please listen carefully. <laughs> <laughs> this is the podcast where we talk about all things Magic the Gathering. But mostly Commander. So this past week, I got to do some streaming. So you know, it's funny as I, I posted online that I had a little bit more time back in my week. This this you know I have a big work project that's coming to a close this this upcoming week. So I, I I'm starting to feel a little bit more free time in the in in my uh, evenings. And so I tweeted. I said, Hey, I'm looking I'm looking to see if anybody you know wants somebody to be a guest on their stream. I would love to come join you. And um, so I got to stream with the Social Contract and with MTG Lexicon this past week. Both were so much fun. Um, I got to, I got to die to Emrakul's taking, um, everyone's turn oh. on, on virtual, uh, through virtual EDH. And that was, that was wild watching an Emrakul being bounced to hand with that land that allows you to return your commander to your hand. And then they had a doubling cube and all this mana. It was, it was actually really fantastic. So it was really cool. And then I played with MTG Lexicon and a Kenrith deck did a Kenrith death thing. So we saw half the deck just fall onto the battlefield oops mm. <laughs> love <laughs> so that's, that's, that's kind of did you play any games this past week um i actually um so i went on a, a little a little short vacation and when i got home yesterday the first thing i did was unpack and then get on discord and look for a game of commander so i did end up playing a game yesterday where i lost to one of the strixhaven pre-cons which when, one i uh, lost to the lorehold pre-con um, okay. With that, uh, I know what we we had talked about last week that um, the card that I said would probably be a better commander for the the lore holds the um, Anibu. I think is the yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. that that thing that thing hit me for ten uh, just just on attack triggers and and blew me out of the water so. Uh, it's good. It was like it was like a, it sucked that I died, but I gave myself a mental high five. It's like, yeah, I knew that card was better than the face commander in that deck. Nice. So, yeah, no, that was cool. Um, so, but that's that's the only game um, that I played. But uh, hoping to get some more games. You know, signed up uh, to play on some other people's streams. So we'll see if they reach out to me uh, for that. Yeah, that'll be, that'll very be fun. good. Um, so we did want to talk about some secret lair updates. So there is a new secret lair that just went up for sale starting today. Um, well, I guess starting. April 26th, and that is Dr. Lair's Secretorium Super Drops. It was actually um, a bunch of different uh, secret layers. Um, so come one, come all see the splendors of Dr. Lair's Secretorium Super Drop guests. An amazement and a bevy of lands ranging from the Sesquipendalian <laughs> to the otherworldly. See unbelievable spells borrowed from the Strixhaven School of Mages' famous mystical archive, plus live music. Um, so yeah, really, really fun intro to this giant super drop uh, where uh, really the big thing uh, most people are looking at is the reprinting of a lot of these shock lands. So the shock lands are being reprinted. Um, or at least some of the, yeah, all the shocklands are being reprinted in some capacity here in an alternate art, um, and they're being printed in the sets of the shards. So we're going to see the Bant uh, shard printed, where you get the uh, Hollowed Fountain Breeding Pool Temple and Temple Garden, the Esper shard, where you get Hollowed Fountain Godless Shrine Watery Grave, the Grixis shard, 
where you get blood crypt steam vents and watery grave the jund shard where you get blood crypt overgrown tomb stomping ground and the naya shard where you get temple garden sacred foundry and stomping ground so you can buy these separate you can buy them as a bundle it looks like right now these are coming in uh non-foil and foil and um you save a lot of money. I think the math was done and you save like $100. If you need shocks, this is a great way to get into shocks. And they're called culture shocks because they're done in, in art styles from different planes. So if you're looking to, uh, you I know, uh, I don't bling think, out a deck. I don't think the shocks actually do come in foil. I think they're all non-foil. Are they all non-foil? The shocks I don't see anything on here saying that they are foil. Oh, I'm actually seeing just different denominations of money here. Ah, yes. That is the difference. So these are not coming in. These are not coming in foil. Yes. But if you need to get your shocks, this is a good place to get them. Next, we have the full text lands. These are basic lands that um, have the full uh, the full print for what a land does. Uh, there is actually no art on these lands. So you can buy these in sets of uh, one of each. So you can get one Plains, Island, Swamp, Forest, or Mountain um, in non-foil or foil or you can actually purchase these in bundles of 10 so you can get 10 of each full text land if you are a commander player or someone who has maybe a draft pack where you sleeve up your lands before you go to draft and you usually have 10 of each um you've got the options to get these these are really neat i really really like these mm -hmm. um i i 100 am probably going to pick up the pack of 10 of them even though my wallet says i should not that's okay. You can you can say it's birthday money, maybe um, birthday money, May money, Fourth of July money, spring cleaning money. You can come up with some sort of excuse, end of work sure. project money. There you go. See, there's a, there's an there's an option for everything. Uh, so the next one up is our show is on Friday. Can you make it? Uh, Secret layer. So this one is another one of those like music posters that we saw um, just before the Cal Kaltheim release. Secret layer. Um, so very, very unique artwork uh, all the way to the border, very bright and vivid. We have a Nature's Lore, Wrath of God, Gamble, Decree of Pain, and a Preordain. Uh, I really like the artwork on these. I know they can be very distracting because they look nothing like a real magic card. Um, and I've yet to put any of them in a deck yet, but I think it'll be cool. Like maybe if they print a few more, you could have like an entire deck of just all these crazy artwork cards. I think it'd be cool. Yeah, these ones are like band posters. They're really cool. Yeah. The Wrath of God is, is very psychedelic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I just, these are, these are very cool. And the nice thing is that um, most of these cards are very popular. Yes. So you see them, you see them quite often. Um, the next one here is Showcase Strixhaven. So we are getting some more cards in the same uh, style as the mythic, Mythical Archives here, or the yeah Mystical Archives. Um, and this is uh, including Fire Covenant, Fractured Identity, Fracturing Gust, Drown in the Lock, Artifact Mutation, and All is Dust. A lot of these cards are played in Commander. Some of them might not be, but if you're looking to pick some of these up and you like that art style, um, you can get those here. Yeah, make sure you pick up your copy of Fractured Identity to exile your own Cody. Uh, that way everyone else gets a copy and Cody can't play their permanents for the rest of the game. Um, <laughs> so uh, just to conclude for these secret layers, you can, uh, as Andy mentioned before, some of them are coming in a bundle. You can get all the shocks in a bundle. You can get uh, 10 copies of the basic lands in bundles, both in non-foil and foil. And you can pick up ev uh, a set, one set of everything, uh, also in a super drop bundle. Um, and for your first pre-order, if you do pre-order with your Wizards account, which is a new thing, you will also receive a promotional Arcbound Ravager card, which I think is pretty cool. It does say to, to celebrate some lucky logged in users will get a little something extra. It says specifically uh. 1,000 customers who place it will receive this promotional Arcbound Ravager. So this, this is likely only going to be eligible for the first 1,000 people. Uh, I, you know, I'm not sure. It'll so be you, if, I'm sure. If I'm you get you. in and you're doing it right away, we're talking to you. <laughs> um, you're going to get that Arcbound Ravager. Um, 
Yeah, so this is really cool. We also had one more secret layer update, actually. This is related back to the Valentine's Day 2021 secret layer. So there was actually an announcement related to the Heliod Sun Crown that was in that drop. It said, due to, due to a technical issue, Heliod Sun Crown was omitted from the product secret layer of Valentine's Day 2021. This, impact, uh, this impacted both editions of the product, both foil and regular. And as a result, any customer who purchased this during that smitten super drop, whether individually or part of a bundle, received received or will receive a drop with incomplete contents. So they said that they are expediting a one-time printing of Heliod Sun Crown, which will be sent to customers with impacted orders. The printing is going to be packed along with five extra goblin tokens from the Secret Layer Valentine's Day 2021 drop, and it is expected to ship late May 2021 with tracking information. So there's not, it's not too much of a downside here. Obviously you have to wait a little longer, but you're getting five extra goblin tokens. And there, I believe these were, a, I haven't gone back to look at them, but I remember they had like lots of hearts and I, I feel like mm -hmm. they were like little devil goblin looking things, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, but um, you'll get your Heliod Sun Crown later um, due to this issue. Yeah, I do think it's kind of funny um, that you're getting one one red goblins along with your you know, white Heliod Sun God. But <laughs> um, it, I mean, it did come in the set, so that it does make sense. Exactly. Um, we did want to make a correction from last week's episode. We, uh, I know I had made mention about the fractal tokens um, and how they would nombo with Adrix and Nev, the face commander for the Quandrix deck. Um, and there has been a judge ruling. Um, that does say that when you do double a token creation, you're doubling the creation ability and all associated effects with that token creation. So you are now um, creating two separate fractal tokens and both of those tokens will be getting plus one plus one counters. Uh, this ruling also does affect uh, Zaxara, the um, Sultai. Exemplary. Yeah, the Sultai Hydra from... Uh, the Ikoria precons, uh, where you get zero zero hydras and then put plus one plus one counters on them. So uh, that token creation will also you'll be able to double them. So if you did take your token creators out of those decks because they would die because they come into zero zeros, you can now simply put them back in because those decks are infinitely better now, which is really 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 cool. It does the so the the ruling was from April seventeenth, and it does say if an effect this is from directly from Zaxara. It says if if an effect such as parallel lives causes XR's ability to create multiple hydro tokens, they each receive the X plus one plus one counters. So, um, Adrix and Nev, still great. Oh, yeah. Still great. Even better. And uh, even better. And lastly, um, the patron exclusive deck tech is also now live. Uh, this month, we have a deck tech on Sethron Herloon General. So, if you are a patron, you uh, will likely have. Um, a, a link to this um, when you're listening to this episode. Um, and if you want to support us, you can head to patreon.com slash guardian project pod and donate for any dollar amount. We've got lots of goodies to give away. And um, you know, we'll, uh, we, we are going to have some new artwork soon for a new play mat, which is coming up. Mm -hmm. And um, if you want a set of our tokens, you can get them there as well. Yeah, and if you're looking for any other way to support the podcast, whatever you are listening to the podcast on now, whether it's Spotify or Apple or YouTube, if you could like, follow, leave a comment, a rate. Uh, we always love interacting in the comment section with uh, our viewers. Tell us why we're wrong. Uh, <laughs> we, we had actually, now that I think about it, we had another correction because I had said Killian was the uh, second... Uh, commander to ever be Loris Legal, um, and actually Karlov of the Ghost Council was already the second. And uh, how could we have forgotten one? Karlov, Ravnica, right? That's plain. Right. Yeah. So that's why I forgot it. Um, that's why you forgot. Right. I didn't forget. I just didn't correct. <laughs> no. um, so yeah, Killian's actually the third. So we love to get those comments. Tell us why we're wrong. You know, make us better magic players um, that way too. Exactly, exactly. So, Coyle, what is our main topic 
for this week. So this week we're going to talk about um, kind of a, it, it's not necessarily a, a new thing, um, but it's coming into the spotlight a little bit more now. And this is uh, Commander Spellbook. It's a community driven project dedicated to compiling thousands of game winning combos geared toward the Commander format. They're partnered with EDH Rec and they have a Discord channel and um, they have a place where you can submit your own combos and they just have this really huge database of combos where you can um, look up specific cards if you want to do it um, and just trying to find combos again in the commander format. Um, so with the release of Commander 21 and Strixhaven, we're going to chat about some of the new game winning combos uh, that are now existent because of these brand new cards that we got. Yes, so I think it is time to cook 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 combo. So if you are looking to check out these combos that we're going to talk about today, you can head to uh, commanderspellbook.com where you can search for specific combos to add to your own decks. And we are today going to look specifically at combos related to Commander 21 and Strixhaven. So you can head over here and um, there's actually right now, there is a featured page. So it is presenting us with combos specifically related to the new cards that came out. So um, they, they specifically also focus on combos that are five cards or less. And if you wanna submit a combo, you can head over to their Discord channel and submit those to maybe have one of your cool combos uh, featured. So we have not read through all of these combos. So we will be experiencing some of these live with you. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through the combos and then explain what these combos do. So a lot of these cards we've seen, and this is where it gets really interesting seeing some really, really old cards that are coming into the spotlight or cards that you didn't think about getting uh, getting some, some love here. So. I'm gonna go ahead here. I'm gonna start with the first this first set here. All right. So this is this is a combination of four cards. This is Quandrix Command, Crystalline Crawler, Doubling Season, and Dual Caster Mage. So Quandrix Command is an instant that says you can return target creature Planeswalker to its owner's hand. You can counter an artifact or an enchantment. You can put two counters on target creature, two plus one plus one counters, or target player shuffles three cards from their graveyard into the library, okay? Crystalline Crawler has converged, so it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter for each color of mana you spent to cast it. So this is back from, I believe this was Battle for Zendikar, okay? It's a one one that costs four, four generic mana. You can remove a counter from it to add a color of any mana to your mana pool, and you can tap it to put a counter on it. And then we all, we, a lot of us know what doubling season does. So if an effect would create one or more tokens, you create double those tokens. And if an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent, you put twice that many counters. Okay. So all of these combos we're going to talk about also have some prerequisites, right? To make the combo happen, you have to, you know, you have to meet these requirements. So basically crystalline crawler and doubling season are going to have to be on the battlefield. Dual caster mage is the final part of this combo. It has to be in your hand. And then you have to have two colorless, a blue, two red, and green available to, 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 to use, okay? So follow me. You're gonna cast Quandrix Command to return a creature to its owner's hand and put two counters on a creature. So maintaining priority, you cast Dual Caster Mage. So Dual Caster Mage allows you to copy an instant or sorcery spell. So you're gonna copy the Quandrix Command. And when you do that, you are going to return Dual Caster Mage to your hand and put two more counters on the Crystalline Crawler. So now you have four counters on Crystalline Crawler, right? Because you put two, but doubling season is doubling it. Mm -hmm. So then you remove those counters and you're going to cast Dual Caster Mage again, targeting at Quandrix Command, and you just repeat steps two through five over and over and over. And um, this, the results here are you get you can get infinite storm count, you can make your creatures infinitely large, you can get infinite colored mana, infinite enter the battlefield triggers, and infinite leaves the battlefield triggers. So if you have something else that you want to pair with these, um, you can go to town. Or if you want to just cast a grape shot afterwards, oh, there you go. Yeah. That's awesome. So and and, this, and Not all combos that we're going to talk about today also have this many cards. <laughs> this one was, we were starting out with one of the combos that has probably the most cards in it. A lot of them are going to be two cards, three cards. So it's a lot easier to, to digest. Well, and it's interesting you say that because, um, so one question that I would have had 
had I had I not already prepared for this episode at least a little bit, uh, would be how how do they deal with variants? Because obviously there's some cards that do the same thing in in some cases. Um, so if we look at this list, we actually see generally the same um, combo here listed a bunch of times with a couple cards that are that are slightly tweaked. So the Quandrix Command and the Crystalline Crawler are the common things. The third card is a plus one, plus one counter doubler, or to get one extra plus one, plus one counter. And the fourth card being a uh, a spell, a, an instant or sorcery doubler on a creature with flash. So Exactly. So you can take this same combo, and instead of playing with dual caster mage, you can actually substitute Naru Meha Master Wizard. So this is a... A legendary creature that was actually just reprinted, um, but it was originally from, I believe, Dominaria. And so this says Flash. When Naru Meha Master Wizard enters the battlefield, you can copy target instant or sorcery spell you control and choose new targets for the copy. So this one, instead of having to have the um, mana available of two colorless blue, red, red, and green, this one says you have to have three colorless blue, 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 and green because Naru Meha costs blue, blue. So you can substitute it. And then the results of this combo changes it up a little bit. This one, you get infinite storm count, infinite enter the battlefield, and leaves the battlefield triggers. So you can change these up a bit, although like you you said Quandrix Command, Crystalline Crawler, and Doubling Season stay the same. Right. And and again, we're only looking at new combos. So Quandrix Command is the important thing here, but the Crystalline and comboing with Crystalline Crawler, that's the combo that we're looking at here. Very cool. Um, and then you can pick whatever color combination your particular commander could fit. And you could fit that that particular combo right in there. Exactly. So so you can also pair this with uh, the Quandrix Command and Crystalline Crawler can be paired with Vorinclex Monstrous Rider and Dual Caster Mage. It can be paired with Vorinclex and Narumeha. It can be paired with Peer Imaginative Rascal and Dual Caster Mage. It can be paired with Corpse Jack Menace and Dual Caster Mage. And it can be paired with Corpse Jack Menace and Narumeha. There's, there's a lot of variations on this combo. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the next one uh, combo on here is actually probably the first combo that people were really mentioning because it was one of the first um, mythics that got released for the Strixhaven set. And and that's involving Professor Onyx, our, our Liliana is back. Um, so Professor Onyx and Chain of Smog. So Professor Onyx is a four black, black legendary planeswalker Liliana. It starts with five loyalty. That has Magecraft whenever you cast it or copy an instant or sorcery spell. Each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. She also has three activatable abilities as many planeswalkers do that are no, not really relevant for this combo. Yeah, none of them <laughs> matter. It's, it's the Magecraft that matters. That's right. Uh, because the other card we have is Chain of Smog. And Chain of Smog is one of black. And it's a sorcery that says target player discards two cards from his or her hand. That player may copy this spell and may choose a new target for that copy. Um, so if we look over the prerequisites, Professor Onyx has to be on the battlefield and Chain of Smog has to be on your hand. You have to have the mana to cast Chain of Smog. You cast it targeting yourself. Professor Onyx triggers because you're casting a spell. Uh, for each opponent loses two life and you gain two life, and then uh, you discard two cards, you can copy it and target yourself again, and you can continue to target yourself, and <laughs> since those are copies of targets, your opponents will continue to be drained life until they are all dead. Um, so the result is infinite life loss, infinite life gain, and hopefully you win the game. Yeah, this card this card is 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 got got extremely expensive chain of smog was one mm -hmm. of those cards that spiked as soon as professor onyx was revealed um so if you have a chain of smog and you played and you played during onslaught go pull that chain of smog out because right now i believe that it was still around 15 to 20 dollars yeah I for think. an un for an uncommon i mean if you want to discard your hand go for it it's even better when you can just infinite with it yeah just it's even better when you win <laughs> exactly so the next combo here is adrix and nev twin casters so you know i'm back on my my um quandrix stuff here uh with helm of the host so uh basically all permanents have to be on the battlefield and you equip helm of the host to adrix and nev so this is going to end up resulting in near infinite creature tokens with haste and near infinite under the battlefield triggers so basically adrix and nev are on the battlefield 
And then at the beginning of your combat step with Helm of the Host, you make two non-legendary copies of Adrix and Nev. The following turn, you're gonna you're gonna go to that combat step, and when Helm of the Host triggers, you're gonna make eight non-legendary tokens of Adrix and Nev with haste for ten copies. And then on the following turn, you make two thousand fifty-nine non-legendary <laughs> copies of Adrix and Nev with haste. And and it, I like that this combo specifically says this. Should be enough to kill your opponent. It should be. It should be enough. It, yeah, you know, if one po- if one person though was at like four thousand life, they, they might not, because you got to split that damage up somehow. Yeah. No, that's yeah. that's very true. I mean, there's a lot of scenarios. Maybe they're also searching this combo website and getting infinite life. So. Absolutely. <laughs> no, but this is cool. It's cool to see that um, we're also seeing submissions of stuff that doesn't just win instantaneously. This one is a like a two turn, two or three turn. Yeah, setup combo to make combos it don't necessarily mean they end the game as soon as you get it. You right. know, some cards just combo really well with each other. We, you know, some people refer to that as synergy. They Absolutely. they they combo really well. Um, Helm of the Host tends to combo really well with just a lot of commanders. Um, it's it's the star of a CDH deck. Um, with a specific commander. But Adrix and Nev also really like Helm of the Host. Absolutely. Um, that being said, I would, uh, in our next combo, would like to talk about a combo that does just win the game right on the spot. Um, right on the spot. And, and this is another one of those chain cards, actually. So we saw Chain of Smog, which was the... Wait, Chain of Smog? Is that uh, Chain of Smog? It was Chain yeah, of was Smog. The black one. Mm-hmm. Um, so now we're seeing Chain of Acid, which is the green spell. I mean, most people probably only even know about Chain of Vapor, Chain of Vapor being the blue bounce one. Um, mm-hmm. But Chain of chain of Acid... So this this particular combo uh, consists of Chain of Acid, Wither Bloom Apprentice, and Dark Steel Citadel. Uh, chain of Acid is three and a green sorcery. It says destroy target non-creature permanent. Then that permanence controller may copy this spell and may choose a new target for the copy. Uh, Wither Bloom Apprentice is a human druid uh, for a black and a green. It's a 2-2 with Magecraft. It says whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So very similar to the um, Professor Onyx Magecraft ability. And then Dark Steel Citadel uh, is an indestructible land that taps for a color. So the prerequisites are all the permanents are on the battlefield and the Chain of Acid is in hand and you have the mana to cast Chain of Acid. You target your indestructible Dark Steel Citadel with your Chain of Acid. Uh, because it, it's an artifact land. Did you say artifact land? Uh, it is an artifact land. It is an land. artifact land. Yeah, because yes. you need to be able to target an artifact. It's a non-creature permanent. Or a non-creature permanent. Yep. Oh, so, and, non-creature in general. That's right. So then uh, it'll it'll trigger your Witherbloom Apprentice, and then you continue to copy it, continue to target it. It doesn't get destroyed because it's indestructible. Um, and then you'll be able to drain your opponents completely. Um, but as you know, we had just discussed in those two seconds right there, Andy, it's any non-creature permanent. You can replace yep. this Dark Steel Citadel with anything. It's just Dark Steel Citadel costs zero mana, and it's hard to target from your opponents unless they have some specific hate pieces. So it's uh, easy to put down. And um, also, as we just talked about, Professor Onyx has a very similar ability to this. So if you're playing the colors where you can have both green and black, you can run Chain of a- uh, Acid along with Professor Onyx it doesn't have to be uh, Witherbloom Apprentice itself. Um, and I think there's even some more cards with Magecraft that are going to combo off with, with these chain cards. Yeah, yeah. So this one here with the Dark Steel Citadel, you just have to have an indestructible permanent. So you can substitute the Citadel for Cascading Cataracts, Mirror Matrix, Skyclave Relic, Dark Steel Ingot, Dark Steel Plate, Dark Steel Axe, Dark Steel Brute, Dark Steel Forge, Dark Steel Pendant. Dark Steel Reactor and Dark Steel Relic. Uh, today I learned, and by today I mean this very second, how many cards from Dark Steel I guess there were that had their name in it. Oh yeah, all the Dark Steels are indestructible for sure. Th- that sounds like the most vain that like plain. Are they all from Dark Steel? Are they from the set Dark Steel? Dark Steel's like you'll remember me by my name. It's like um, <laughs> Tyler Perry's you know show. Tyler well, this Perry's is like Dark X. House of Pain, Tyler Perry, you know, <laughs> this is Dark Steel's X. Yes, yes. So um, this is, Dark Steel is Tyler Perry is what I just learned. Yeah. If Tyler Perry was a plane, it would be Dark uh, a set, I guess, not even a plane that's mirrored in. If Tyler Perry was a magic set, it would be Dark Steel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next combo. You know, 
I didn't really. We didn't really want to move from chain of acid, did we? No. We can explain this one. We can explain this one similarly, but let's stay on chain of acid. So that's the same same sorcery coil just mentioned. Destroy target non creature permanent. They that controller may copy the spell um, and then copy it and uh, choose a new target. Okay. So let's substitute black for red though, and let's add storm kiln artist from. Um, Strixhaven. So this is a 2-2 Dwarf Shaman for 3 and a red that says Storm Kiln Artist gets plus 1 plus 0 for each artifact you control and has Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, create a treasure token. So the, the exact same combo, um, instead of having somebody lose a life and gain a life, you're going to make one treasure token. So you cast it targeting your, your indestructible permanent. So we mentioned all those indestructible permanents. And you make a treasure. This results in infinite colored mana. Yeah. Yeah. Infinite mana of any color is, is cool. And um, I guess even on top of it, I know they're not included in these combos, but uh, Storm Kiln Artist itself gets plus one plus zero for each artifact you control. If you had like a fling or something in your deck, you could fling your Storm Kiln Artist at the end of it and kill someone with your giant Storm Kiln Artist. Exactly. Do it up. <laughs> um, all right. So this this next combo is one that I was actually pretty excited to see um, when we were talking about uh, cards that we um, we liked from the set. Uh, Dragon's Guard Elite was actually one of the cards that I thought, you know, it's like I, I wasn't in love with the card, but in my head I said, but if this was in a Necrotic Ooze deck, this might be pretty cool. So as cool as someone else did the work for me and they made the Necrotic Ooze combo with Dragon's Guard Elite. So Necrotic Ooze, if you don't know, um, is a four mana ooze. So for two black black, you get a four three ooze. Says as long as necrotic ooze is on the battlefield, it has all activated abilities of all creature cards in all graveyards. And dragon's guard elite from Strixhaven is one and a green. You get two two human druid with magecraft. It says whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, put a plus one plus one counter on dragon's guard elite. And you can pay four green green to double the number of plus one plus one counters on dragon's guard elite. You have Workhorse as part of this combo. It's a six mana artifact creature. It is a zero zero that comes into play with four plus one plus one counters on it. You remove a plus one plus one counter from Workhorse to add a colorless mana to your mana pool. You can only play the, or you play the ability as a mana source. Sorry, I thought I was going to say you only play the, the ability as a sorcery, but <laughs> even faster than instance. Uh, and the last card in this combo is Chromatic Ori, a seven mana uh, legendary artifact, seven um, generic mana. It says you may spend mana as though or mana of any color you can tap it to add five colorless mana and you can use five colorless and tap it or five generic and tap it to draw a card for each color among permits you control the prerequisites for this combo being dragon's guard elite and a workhorse in your graveyard and at least seven plus one plus one counters on necrotic ooze um looking at that i'd say uh, I guess good luck getting the plus one plus one counters on Necrotic Ooze some other way. Yeah. Um, yep. And then you also need to have six mana available in order to activate the Dragon's Guard Elite activated ability with your Necrotic Ooze. Um, so the steps are to activate the Necrotic Ooze, to double the plus one plus one counters to 14 on Necrotic Ooze, remove six of the plus one plus one counters from Necrotic Ooze to add six colorless mana or six mana of any color to your mana pool because of your Chromatic Ori. And then you repeat the process um to just continue to have the the biggest necrotic ooze in the world you have infinite plus one plus one counters on it you'll have infinite colorless mana and infinite colored mana because of the workhorse maybe you have a walking ballista also in your graveyard and you can use up those plus one plus one counters to kill your opponents uh, this is definitely a very convoluted combo uh very difficult to assemble um the seven plus one plus one counter seems to be a little far fetched. Everything else, I guess, with a buried alive, you can assemble. So, uh, but it's nice to see some of these new cards like Dragon's Art Elite being used. Exactly. And so you mentioned the Chain of Acid and Professor Onyx combos, just like the um, Witherboom Apprentice. Mm -hmm. So you can continue to do that. Now, we do have um, a combo here that is colorless. So this involves Nim Deathmantle, Ashnod's Altar, and the new Triplicate Titan. So basically the prerequisites here are that all cards are on the battlefield. So Nim Deathmantle says, uh, uh, or it's an, it's an equipment that costs two colorless. And it says equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, has intimidate, and is a black zombie. And whenever a non-token creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you can pay four. If you do, return that card to the battlefield and attach Nim Deathmantle to it. 
Ashnod's Altar is an artifact for three that says sacrifice a creature, add two colorless to your mana pool. And then Triplicate Titan is a 9-9 Titan with Flying Vigilance and Trample for nine. And it says when Triplicate Titan dies, create a 3-3 colorless golem artifact creature token with flying, a 3-3 colorless golem artifact creature token with vigilance, and a 3-3 colorless golem artifact creature with trample. Okay, so basically here you're going to activate Astronaut's Altar, sacrificing the Triplicate Titan to add two colorless. And then the Nim Death Mantle trigger and the triplicate titan triggers to make all those golems so you resolve the titan trigger creating your three golems and then you activate astronaut's altar sacrificing one of those golems to add two colorless to your mana pool you pay the four on the nim death mantle to return the triplicate titan to the battlefield with the nim death mantle attached to it and then you just repeat the process so you're you're netting two golems every time you do this so this is going to result in infinite creature tokens infinite colorless mana infinite enter the battlefield triggers infinite leaves the battlefield triggers infinite death triggers and infinite sacrifice triggers so if you pair this with a blood artist you're just going to end the game right there um if you if you don't have a sack out or something i mean at least you made infinite mana so play out what you got in your hand right for sure um this is definitely just the newest iteration of this combo uh, this does work with any creature that when it enters the battlefield or dies, uh, creates uh, two or more tokens. Uh, Grave Titan was a big target of this combo for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally use this Ashnaz Altered Dim, uh, Nim Death Mantle combo with my uh, Kokusho of the Evening Star and a Pawn of Ulamog so that when it dies, you get a token and then you can sacrifice that for the other two colorless mana. Um, so this, it's really cool to see more cards being built around this. Um, may, and, and it is all in colorless, which is really cool. You can put it in anything. You can put it in the, uh, the golems matter eek to keek, uh, partner deck now, um, and have all those giant golems in there. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so the next one, um, that I saw that I just thought was it, honestly, the only way I can describe this combo is cute. This is a cute combo. Uh, this is in Simic, uh, and it involves uh, the alternate win condition of Simic Ascendancy. So the three cards are Body of Research, Leyline of Anticipation, and Simic Ascendancy. So Simic Ascendancy is a two-mana enchantment for green and a blue um, that you can pay one a green and a blue to put a plus one, plus one counter on a target creature you control. Uh, whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on a creature you control, you can put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if, if Simic Ascendancy has 20 or more growth counters on it, you win the game. Uh, Leyline of Anticipation is going to allow us to cast our spells at flash speed, instant speed. It's a four mana enchantment. Uh, we'll be able to get it on the battlefield as a pre-game action if we have it in our starting hands. We won't even have to pay the mana for it. Um, and Body of Research is our new card from Strixhaven that is going to enable us to win. Um, and Body of Research is a uh, sorcery for green, 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 blue, blue, blue to create a uh, zero, zero green and blue fractal creature token. And you put X plus one plus one counters on it where X is equal to the number of cards in your library. Um, it's a big, it's a big creature. Oftentimes in Commander, the number of cards in your library is more than 20, which is the number that you need for Simic Ascendancy uh, in order to, <laughs> to happen. Um, so, often, often is correct. <laughs> so this, uh, this combo uh, does have the prerequisites here of all permanents on the battlefield, except for Body of Research in hand uh, and the mana to cast it. Um, obviously you could have Simic Ascendancy in your hand as well, as long as you had the mana to also cast Simic Ascendancy. Um, Ley Line of Anticipation really is only enabling us to play this combo at the end step right before our upkeep so we can win instantaneously. You can play this combo at sorcery speed and hopefully just the, the whole board goes around. No one has an answer to your enchantment. Um, but what happens is you have Simic Ascendancy on the battlefield. Uh, you put Body of Research on. Body of Research comes on with 80 plus one plus one counter Simic Ascendancy ascendancy gets uh 80 of uh its growth counters and at your upkeep you win the game because you have more than 20 growth counters on simic ascendancy yeah i would say in most games right you're going to play it at sorcery speed and you're going to hope to god that nobody has enchantment removal and then if you're like me everyone is holding enchantment removal <laughs> and you're like how are you all holding enchantment removal but i but i feel it i've never won with simic ascendancy but Same. i feel like winning at instant speed with simic ascendancy is that's even better oh yeah way better yeah no this is really cool i like this a lot um 
reliable to do all the time? Probably not. But when you pull it off, that's the play of the game. That is the play of the game. Let's look at another combo here. With the dragon that got everybody's attention, our new card for this combo is Belladros Witherbloom. So this is the Witherbloom dragon, the elder dragon, a 4-4 four, four for 5, a black, and a green. Uh, it says flying at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature token with, when this creature dies, you gain one life. You can pay 10 life to untap all lands you control, activate only once each turn. Then we're playing with Lithiform Engine. Which coil? I almost never see, I have never seen somebody successfully use this card. I've cast it once, died the next turn. Oh, have you I've, seen Lithiform I've, Engine be used? Yeah, I use it in my Svela deck. I use it all the time. Oh, well, yeah. I have never, I guess I've never <laughs> seen you use it in a Svela deck. I, I haven't played against it. It's been a couple of weeks. So a Lithiform Engine's a really fun card. So this was from Zendikar Rising. So um, four colorless. It has three abilities. Two and tap it, you can copy target activator to trigger the ability you control and choose new targets. Three and tap it, you can choose target instant or sorcery you control and choose new targets for it. And pay four and tap it, you can copy target permanent uh, you control, permanent spell you control. And then the last card here is Minamo, School at Water's Edge. So it's a legendary land that taps for blue or pay a blue and tap it to untap target legendary permanent. So the prerequisite to make this combo happen is all of these permanents have to be on the battlefield. You have to have at least 11 life because Belladro says pay 10 life to untap your lands. Um, and then you control other lands that can tap for at least three colorless, a blue, and two colorless are available. So basically what you're going to do here is you're going to activate Belladros Witherbloom to pay 10 life. In response to that, you're going to activate Lithiform Engine to pay 2 to copy that ability. Um, you're going to resolve a copied ability which untaps all your lands, and then you activate Manamo for a single blue to untap the Lithiform Engine because it says untap target legendary permanent. So Lithiform Engine's legendary. You're going to activate the Lithiform Engine by paying two again to copy Belladros Witherbloom's ability, and then you just keep going. So the results here are you can make infinite mana with Belladros and a Manamo and a Lithiform Engine. This is very expensive and very... Uh, the mana that, that has to be cast to make this happen is just so much, right? Belladros is seven, Lithiform is four. You have to make sure that they're on the battlefield, not removed. But for infinite mana, this this style points. Yeah, and I think I think style points honestly where where this where this combo is going to stay. If if Mianmo School at Water's Edge didn't require blue to activate, I think this would be a much more easily assemblable combo because then you could have Belladros as the commander. But since you do need um, Sultai, the full Sultai colors, and not just the uh, Witherbloom colors, um, Belladros means has all to be three in the 99. Are, right. All three of these are in the 99, so you have to make sure you get them to your hand. Right, right. Although so. if you're tutoring for three cards and you're going to Demonic Tutor and you're going to... Uh, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, vampiric tutor and 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 whatever tutors you got. If you're grabbing <laughs> these three, I'm gonna give you the game. Yeah, I want. I want to see it. I want to see. I mean, I don't know what you're gonna do with that infinite mana, but if you're in Saltai colors, you probably have a commander that can do something nasty, right? Oh, uh, most likely. Play I mean, in Tassiger. Oh, then then yes. Then the answer is <laughs> yes. The answer is just yes. This seems. I would put this combo in Tassiger the Golden Fang. Yeah, no, yeah, I think you have to. Um, all right, Andy, just so I don't trip you up, uh, I am actually going to be skipping the next two because I know you really want to talk about the next one, um, but I'm skipping down to this green-white combo here. And uh, it combines three cards. We have Trostani, Selesnia's Voice, which is a green-green-white-white legendary creature dryad. 2-5 says whenever another creature enters the battlefield, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. It uh, also has the ability to pay one, a green, and a white tap to populate. That will not be relevant for this combo. Uh, we have Ashnod's Altar returning again for three generic mana. Sacrifice the creature to add two, two colorless mana to your mana pool. Uh, and our new card is Trudge Garden. So this is from the Commander 21 set. This is an enchantment for two and a green. It says whenever you gain life, you may pay two uh, generic mana. If you do, create a 4-4 four, four green fungus beast creature token with trample. Uh, prerequisites are all the permanents are on the battlefield and you have two 
mana available and a way to gain life to uh, start this combo. So you gain life, Trudge Garden triggers, you pay two to make a 4-4, it enters the battlefield, Trostani triggers, you gain four life, uh, Trudge Garden triggers again, you sacrifice the 4-4 to Ashnod's Altar so that you get the two colorless mana to pay for Trudge Garden and it creates another 4-4. Um, it allows you to gain infinite amount of life. You have infinite ETB triggers in case you have something that could take advantage of that. Uh, sacrifice trigger, uh, triggers and leave the battlefield triggers as well. Um, maybe you have an altar of the brood to mill everyone out, um, or maybe you have uh, an Aetherflux Reservoir to shoot everyone down with your infinite life. You know, I like seeing this, and I feel like Tristani Selesnya's voice is one of those decks that has a hard time closing the game out without a um, mm-hmm. you win the game if you control if you have forty or more life, or perhaps oh, yeah. an Aetherflux Reservoir, or perhaps uh, you know you know just a just a life gain matters, and and populate obviously can make creature tokens right, but this is great to have as a backup win con in a deck like this. So if I played Tristani. I would certainly play Trudge Garden now with Ashnod's Altar. It mm-hmm. just seems it seems too fun to not want to include. And again, style points. Trudge Garden, <laughs> you're like, what are you going to do with this? Cool, you make a fungus. No, I make all the fungus. <laughs> all the fungus. All right, so I'm going to scoot back then, and yeah. I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about a mono red combo first. So this one is actually Riona Fire Dancer combined with Combat Celebrant. So Riona is the new card from Commander 21 here, and it is a 3-4 Human Wizard for 3 Red Red that says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, create X tokens that are copies of another target creature you control, where X is 1 plus the number of instant and sorcery cards you've cast this turn. They gain haste, exile them at the beginning of the next end step. And then Combat Celebrant really popular card in commander uh this is from amonkhet it's a human warrior it's a 4-1 for two and a red that says if combat celebrant hasn't been exerted this turn you may exert it as it attacks when you do untap all other creatures you control after this um phase there's an additional combat phase so the prerequisites here are you just have to have both of these cards on the battlefield so when you move to your combat step riona will trigger creating a copy of combat celebrant with haste You exert that combat celebrant as it attacks, granting you additional combat step after this one, and you untap all creatures you control. And you just repeat this because Riona says at the beginning of each combat, you do this. So you're just going to keep making combat celebrants. This is a two-card combo, and total mana is uh, eight mana. So, I mean, that's not that's not even crazy in, in Commander. No. So um, this results in infinite combat damage or infinite combat damage, infinite combat steps, in, infinite enter the battlefield uh, a bit, uh, triggers, and then infinite creature tokens with haste. I love this. This is crazy. Everybody was talking about Riona with Dockside Extortionist. I even think that we both said that when we were talking about sure. the, the cards. It just seems really fun. I'm going to make a Dockside. I'm going to make a Dockside. This, I did not, I, I completely forgot about. I always forget about Combat Celebrant because I don't play any decks that use it right now. Mm-hmm. Do you, you do. You have well, Combat Celebrant in a deck right now, do, don't you? I usually include Combat Celebrants in Mono Red Swing decks, but that is sure. because that's how my standard started with uh, God Pharaoh's Gift Combat Celebrant combo. So yeah. um, that has that's near and dear to my standard heart. So that one goes in decks for that reason. Uh, it's good to see that it's actually good, though, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually very good. It's actually very, very good. Yeah. Um, all right. So our uh, next combo, uh, again, Andy, I really want you to talk about this this other Simic one. Um, so I will. I I'm, will. I'm going to uh, just quickly mention um, three of the cards we had already talked about, uh, Witherbloom Apprentice, Storm Kiln Artist, and Professor Onyx that have their Magecraft abilities that go infinite. Um, are also with, with the with the chain cards that we talked about already are also going to mm-hmm. be going infinite when you cast um, two spells that copy spells and you just like copy each other like dual strike and fork um, or twin cast and expansion explosion um, increasing vengeance and uh, twin cast just all of these uh, uh, spells that already have just copy target spell and if you copy a copy and then that copy copies the copy and then that copy copies the original copy and it just goes on forever uh, it's just another way to get those infinite mage craft triggers uh, yeah. that a, a majority of these Strixhaven combos are built around exactly 
So the next one here is a card that works really well in a deck that I mentioned a few episodes ago, which was Kadena Slinking Sorcerer. So this is, the new card here is the Yodora Grave Gardener. So this is the 5-5 five, five Tree Folk Druid from the Commander 21 decks that costs four and a green. So it says whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may return it to the battlefield face down under its owner's control. It's a forest land. This pairs really well with Primordial Mist and Walking Ballista. So Primordial Mist is an enchantment that says at the beginning of your end step, you may manifest the top card of your library. So you put it on the battlefield face down. That's not going to really matter here. Um, what is going to matter is it says exile a face down permanent you control face up. You may play that card this turn. And Walking Ballista is a 0-0 zero, zero construct that, that costs XX to cast. And um, it enters the battlefield with X plus and plus one counters on it. Um, you can remove a counter from it to deal one damage to any target. You can pay four to put a counter on it. So basically what you have to do here is you need Yodora and Primal Mist to be on the battlefield and Walking Ballista needs to be in your hand. So you cast Walking Ballista for zero. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to die immediately for having no toughness. The Eudora is going to trigger, and it is going to return Walking Ballista to the battlefield face down as a forest land. You can tap that forest for a green mana, okay? Then again, you're going to activate Primordial Mist here that says exile face down permanent you control face up. You may play it. So you're going to exile that Walking Ballista that immediately died and is now face down. You're going to exile it face up, and then you're going to cast it for zero, and then it's going to enter, it's going to die. It's going to turn. So, so this is going to result in infinite, infinite damage. It's going to result in infinite green mana, infinite entered the battlefield ability, infinite leaves the battlefield, infinite death trigger, infinite sacrifice trigger, infinite storm count, infinite landfall. This can do all the things because once you get enough of that forest, you can just cast the walking ballista for a ginormous amount and then remove all the counters and just ping your opponents. Mm -hmm. Like it does... It does all the things. You need mana. I mean, you're only making green this way, but that's okay. Maybe you got other colorless spells. If not, ch channel it all into this walking ballista. I love this combo. And if you're playing Kadena, I, I feel like Primordial Mist came in that precon, but Eudora just fits so well. Because when, when your non-token creatures die, you want them to come back into the battlefield. And face down cards matter in that deck. And walking ballista, I feel like you're only adding one real card to the deck that may not have been initially thought to be included because it didn't combo with anything now it does no oh, yeah definitely this is so cool i love this one that is really cool and and um you know it, it technically works if just to get infinite mana uh with any any creature that is zero cost right yeah um and then i see some other ones going like uh it has uh den protector um, which is another one of these morph cards um, that you can, uh, when in combined with Ashnod's Altar, will net you infinite colorless mana as well. So, you know, other ways, if you if you don't have these zero power and toughness creatures that automatically die uh, and you do have a sacrifice outlet, you can still make the combo go off that way. Yeah, so with Yodora and Ashnod's Altar, you can sack the Den Protector to get two colorless mana, and Yodora brings it back face down as a force. You tap it for green, you, and then um, you can Megamorph Den Protector because face down creatures can be flipped face up. So you pay one and a green to flip it face up, and then you can return a card from your graveyard to your hand and repeat that. So you, you not only get infinite colorless mana, but you get infinite graveyard recursion back to your hand. Yeah, every card in your graveyard back in your it's yeah, like a Praetor's would, Council. It is. And if you, this one can actually be, this is a combo if you wanted to play Mono Green Yodora by itself. Yes. So you can have the part of the combo in your command zone in this instance. I wonder what card you could like infinitely bring back from your graveyard to your hand that's colorless that'll kill your opponent. Walking Ballista. Huh? <laughs> Who would have guessed? <laughs> All right, this one um, I haven't I haven't even pre looked at this one yet, and I you know sometimes we're like, which one is this? Starting to look at this is black and red, uh, including the cards: first day of class, murderous red cap, and viserys ear. Okay, um, so we're gonna walk through this together. Let's do. We we neither of us have even seen this combo. That's right. First day of class, one in a red instant says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and it gains haste until end of turn. And then you learn. 
Med- Murderous Red Cap. Two hybrid black red, hybrid black red. Whenever Murderous Red Cap enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Persist, and it's a 2-2. Two, two. And then Viscera Seer is a one black vampire that sacrifices creatures to scry one. Uh, it's a vampire wizard, so 1-1. One, one. Um, Prezark is it's all permanents on the battlefield. First day of class in hand, we have enough mana to cast first day of class. Uh, it's steps. We're going to cast the first day of... Oh, uh, they wrote it wrong. It says school. Yeah, first cast the first day of class, <laughs> causing, <laughs> causing it so that each creature enters the battlefield under control. This turn gets a plus one, plus one counter on it and gains haste until end of turn. Uh, activate Viscera Seer, sacrificing murderous red crap, red cap to <laughs> scry red crap <laughs> to scry one. <laughs> murderous red caps persist triggers. Oh, and it returns with the minus one, minus one, but then it gets a plus one, plus one. So the two counters negate so that you can infinitely sacrifice. He'll never have a minus one, minus one. Persist will always trigger. You'll get the You're talking death so triggers. fast. I can't even follow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Slow down, Coil. Murderous red cap. Uh, when it dies, <laughs> it has a persist trigger that would normally bring it back with a minus one, minus one counter. But since you already cast first day of class, that would uh, have all of your creatures enter with a plus one, plus one counter. That plus one, plus one, and minus one, minus one will negate each other. Uh, and then w- next time you go to sacrifice murderous red cap, um, it won't have the minus one, minus one counter. Its persist will be able to trigger again. It will come back from ba- the graveyard again, enter the battlefield, do its damage to someone. Um, you'll have infinite enter the battlefield triggers, infinite leaves the battlefield triggers, death triggers, sacrifice triggers, um, murderous red crap triggers. Uh, oh my gosh. So you'll be able to scry your entire deck and kill everyone with all the damage. Exactly. We're going to do one more, and then Coil has a combo for us that he put together that he submitted for the website, and actually. I'll walk through it slowly, too. And no Coil worries. walked through that one slowly because there's a <laughs> lot involved. But this last one here that I want to talk about is is um, related to the new card, Archmage Emeritus. So this is the 2-2 uh, human wizard for 2 blue blue that has Magecraft. When you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, draw a card. Um, this pairs well with Fury Storm. So this is the card that came out a couple of years ago. Two red, red. When you cast the spell, copy it for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. You may choose new targets for the copies. And it says copy targeted instant or sorcery spell. You may choose new targets. Um, why did I? Why I, I feel like I read it twice, but that's what it says. It's, well, it's a copy spell, so it makes I know. sense you read it twice. I did read it twice. So the prerequisites here is the Archmage Emeritus has to be on the battlefield. Fury Storm's in your hand. You have cast your commander from this game at some point, and you have two red red available. So as an additional instant or sorcery, and it has to be in your hand with the mana to cast it, or an opponent has cast an as, as of yet unresolved instant or sorcery spell. So really, you have to be able to respond to something with Fury Storm is what they're saying. You have mm-hmm. to be able to copy something. So basically, you cast your additional instant or sorcery spell, or you wait for an opponent to cast one. So the Archmage Emeritus will trigger drawing you a card. You cast the Fury Storm targeting the instant or sorcery spell. Archmage Emeritus will trigger drawing you a card. Fury Storm triggers copying itself for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game, choosing the original Fury Storm as the target. The Emeritus will trigger and you draw a card um, each time. So you resolve a Fury Storm copy, copying the fury storm and then you choose the original fury storm as the target and essentially you just you just draw infinite cards and you have near infinite magecraft triggers because if you just keep going you're gonna lose the game (laughs) because you're gonna draw draw out of your deck is it a may ability it says whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell draw a card ah okay it does not say may so you will have to choose something else with the fury storm to stop this um I love everything about this. <laughs> and if you're playing an Is It Wizard deck and you already have Archmage Emeritus slotted to be included and you're already playing Spell Slingers, yep. this seems just too fun not to do. And I had to talk about it because card draw is my favorite thing. I, I wish this guy was legendary because it's really good. I think it's like on par with his Azami Lady of Scrolls for card draw and wizard tribal decks. It's so good. <laughs> so coil you have a combo you put together with cody the vociferous codex yes and it's involved so lay it on us all right so most people think if you're building a cody deck that you can't build the deck with permanence and this is not true you just can't play permanence when he's on the battlefield and the plan for this particular combo is to kill cody off anyway so play play your mana rocks with cody i just want to preface with that um 
All right, so this particular combo is very involved. There's a lot of uh, cards that are part of the combo, but you'll actually only need a couple cards in order to start the combo. So first off, we have Channel the Suns. Channel the Suns is a four mana sorcery for three and a green where you add Wooberg to your mana pool. White, blue, black, red, green. Um, you have to have Cody Vociferous Codex on the battlefield, um, and it cannot have summoning sickness so that you can activate Cody's ability. Uh, so Cody is a three mana legendary artifact creature construct one four. It says you can't cast permanent spells. You can pay four and tap it to add Wooberg to your mana pool. Then when you uh, cast your next spell this turn, exile cards from the top of your library into you exile an instant or sorcery card with lesser mana value. Till end of turn, you may cast that spell without paying its mana cost and put each other card to exile this way in the bottom of the library in a random order. We're going to be taking advantage of his activated ability. Um, Eldritch Evolution is going to be the most important sorcery in this particular combo. Eldritch Evolution is actually going to be our only instant and sorcery that is less than four mana value. And that's very important when you're building this deck for this combo. Um, Goblin Dark Dwellers is a creature that is going to be in the deck at the beginning of this combo. It is a five um, mana value Goblin 4-4, four, four, so three red red with Menace that says when it enters the battlefield, you may cast target insert a sorcery card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that card would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. Uh, and the final two cards in this combo are Goto Bandit Warlord and Helm of the Host our favorite automatic win conditions uh, in mono red CDH. So for the prerequisites, I talked about it before. Um, there is a deck building prerequisite. The only instant and sorcery that is three mana value or less in the deck is Eldritch Evolution. That is very important. You also need to have four uh, mana value instants and sorceries in order to start the combo with Cody. Um, we're going to choose some specific ones to make the combos a lot more easy by producing mana. Um, so Cody has to be on the battlefield, not have summoning sickness. We need to have channel the sun in our hand, and we need to have a way to produce four mana to activate Cody's ability. Um, so here we go. Here's how it happens. You have Cody on the battlefield, use four mana, activate his ability, produced Wooberg into your mana pool. You use four of that mana, and you're going to cast Channel the Suns. So you're going to have one mana floating. It does not matter what color you have floating. You won't be able to have green floating because you're going to have to use that to cast Channel the Suns. Um, using Cody's activated ability, you're going to exile cards from the top of your library until you exile Eldritch Evolution, and you're going to put that into exile, and Channel the Suns will resolve, adding Wooberg to your mana pool. You now have six mana in your mana pool. You're going to be able to cast Eldritch Evolution for free because of Cody's ability from exile, sacrificing Cody as an additional cost. Uh, and that will allow you to find Goblin Dark Dwellers from your library, and it, when it enters the battlefield, you are going to cast Eldritch Evolution from your graveyard uh, by exiling it, sacrificing Goblin Dark Dwellers as an additional cost. With the sacrifice trigger of Goblin Dark Dwellers, you're going to be able to find Goto Bandit Warlord. When Goto Bandit Warlord enters the battlefield, uh, he has an enter the battlefield trigger that allows you to search for any equipment in your library and put it onto the battlefield. We're going to find Helm of the Host. Um, Helm of the Host and equipment that you can pay five and equip it to a creature. It says at the beginning of combat, make a copy of uh, the equipped creature. If it's legendary, the token copy is a non-legendary copy. Um, since we have six floating mana, we will be able to just simply use five of that floating mana to equip Helm of the Host onto Goto Bandit Warlord, and we'll be able to swing infinite combo or infinite uh, uh, combats and have infinite Goto Bandit Warlords for Enter the Battlefield effects. There's a few other spells that you can cast instead of. Um, uh, channel the suns like inner fire if you have enough cards in your hand to produce enough red mana if you just have nine mana you don't need your four mana spell to produce any mana or if your four mana spell is free like deadly rollick then you don't even need any extra mana in order to cast it um, and that's a way that you can win in a five color cody deck on turn eh, three or four using goto bandit warlord yeah, that's a really fun combo. I, I mean, I like it a lot, and I do hope, I do hope that your combo does get approved for the website. So we can, you know, we can tag it and go look at this. Co uh, Coil posted this one. Um, so for all of you Cody players, and you're looking for something new to do for a uh, for a uh, Coil did refer to it as a little meme, right? Because you know oh, it yeah. may not always happen, but when it does, 
It's going to be great. It'll be fun. And people are going to go um, like, oh, If you okay. want to see any of these combos, uh, again, we will actually post a link, but you can head to commanderspellbook.com and check out all of these. But we want to thank you all for listening this week. If you want to contact us, you can find our podcast online at theguardianprojectpodcast.com. You can find our social media on Twitter at GuardianPod, our gameplay videos on YouTube at Guardian, uh, I'm sorry, youtube.com slash theguardianproject. You can email us at guardianprojectpod at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at ATFlory. You can find me on Twitter at WormCoilEngine. And of course, we want to give a special thanks to Ryan Nichols, our producer and editor. Thank you so much. And Chris Wolf, who handles all of our graphic design. Thank you so much. And... We'll catch y'all next next week. Next week, we'll talk to you for episode ninety nine. Oh, it's our close. last two digit ep- It's a last two digit uh, episode. Oh no! Can you believe that, Coil? Getting old. Getting old. We're gonna be, we're gonna be so old. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> Goodbye, whiteboarders only. <laughs> <laughs>